Good morning. Welcome. We thought this morning we'd take you on a little tour of the Hilliard House, which is on the grounds of the Okefenokee Heritage Center in Waycross, Georgia. This house was built in the 1800s and typical of the rural houses around here, and we thought you might enjoy it. So come along with us. We've exited the building and moving out to the area where the Hilliard House is, and we're taking a stroll down the pathway leading to the back. If you'll notice over on the left, we have you can, or is visible at this point here part of a, our train display which consists of an engine, a Apache car, and a mail car, and a caboose which is on the grounds. You might enjoy visiting that as well. Directly in front of us is the carpenter shop which primarily we use for storage facilities of the tools and equipment to maintenance on the facility. And to the right is the venue this building has recently been renovated and updated and it's utilized and available for weddings or events that you might be interested in presenting. And we'll move on through here and as we move we'll come to the Journal Herald building and we'll see Jacob who is assisting us with all of this work that we're trying to do on YouTube and is doing an excellent job at it. And you will see on the right hand side, which is the Journal Herald building, it, it, it houses equipment that was used early on in the publish of the Waycross Journal Herald, which was a daily paper in Waycross. As we move on by it, we'll move into the area of the Hilliard House and we'll give you a little bit better picture in just a moment. All right, this is the Hilliard House. As you'll notice, it's typical old construction except for the tin roof, which we replaced, which was wooden shingle. We put a tin roof up there, obviously, to try and preserve the building as long as we could. You'll notice in front of the building is a rail fence, which was typical of almost all rural facilities at that time, or homes, rather, in the area. This house was moved from Wellsboro, Georgia, it was the home of Colonel Thomas Hilliard, who was a hero of the Indian Wars. It was built in the mid-1800s. And it is a little atypical in the grounds in that most of the grounds around the rural homes at that time would have been grass. And the reason was just protection from the varmints and protection from snakes and that sort of thing. One of the things that we do not have that would be around a home like this would have been a well. They had to have water, so they didn't have running water, and the well would have been the typical place to receive that. It also would have had outdoor facilities as far as sanitation is concerned. The construction of the home was relatively simple. It was primarily one board laid on or next to another and then covered with a small strip which sealed the crack in between the boards. I'm sure there's an architectural name for it. it seemed like it's board and batten, but I wouldn't want you to take my word for that. If you notice the glass that we've used here or kept with the building, it's original. As you can notice, the uh, it's not really, really a clear type of glass. It's got some waves in it and some looks like foreign matter may be in the glass material itself to make it look that way but it's glass and it wasn't an open window with shutters or an open area with shutters if you notice also the house is not on any kind of concrete footing or any kind of concrete block is put on wooden sections that was taken from logs and hewed just to hold the house and keep things level. I'm sure there were people who were good carpenters in that day and you had to do that. You'll notice also as far as heating goes, this particular home had a 
fireplace on each end in each living area. So they had heat available to them with the fireplaces. That meant somebody had to be energetic and chop a lot of wood. But moving along into the house, you'll notice it was built in such a manner that there are two sections to it. One section generally or usually housed the kitchen and uh, stove and that sort of thing. The other section was the uh, living area. And this section in here was referred to in the south as a dog trot, even sometime a possum trot. But it served as a breezeway and it was early air conditioning. Now it's going to be a little bit dark and the reason it's going to be dark is we don't have any lights here. And the reason we don't have any lights is because we don't have electricity. As you can see, this is one of the living areas. The bed, of course. The fireplace, which was an integral thing in the early homes. And as we were talking about water outside, water was brought in. And usually the washing was done in a pitcher and basin type of arrangement. Some of the tools that we have are housed here as well. An old plow that you might see, and there's a little difficult to see, a sickle. And then moving over into the other area here, you'll see some of the equipment that was housed here, and you'll see some of the chairs and furniture that was used. Everything was not truly primitive, but it was pretty close to it, but it was the way it was in the early times. There's an old weaving loom, and there's an old spinner. Things that I don't know how to do. Things that very few people now know how to do. However, I do remember what it was like in rural area. I remember a corn shuck scrub brush because I can remember my mother using one. I can also remember outside was an iron pot and in that pot clothes were washed in ball and in that pot soap was made. And most of the houses on the grounds in the old rural area had a syrup boiler which syrup was made. Syrup was made not just for themselves, but it was also made as a trading item. And it had a use during hog killing time to scald hogs and clean hogs. It also had on their area generally a smokehouse. And the smokehouse, of course, was to smoke meat, preserve meat in the manner that was used back in those days. So, this has been a little run around the house. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and we hope that you'll take the time and come and visit us when you're in this area. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope you enjoyed the tour, and when you're out and about, come by and see us.